Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining Stop Searching, Start Finding, Using Your Brain for File Management. My name is Matt Caton, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Patrick Thompson, who will be answering all of your questions in the GoToMeeting question panel. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> and today's webinar is all about file management in the brain. So we're going to focus, um, sort of laser focus on how we manage documents and, and items. And files can mean much more than just simply a Microsoft Word document or an Excel spreadsheet. Files these days are located online. They're web pages. They're attached to emails. They're coming at us from so many informa different information sources that it's hard to maintain and catalog them in the typical file and folder type of system that you have on Windows or on a Mac. Now, throughout the course of the demo today, first off, feel free to write any questions that you have into the question panel. So if we have a little bit of extra time at the end, we can actually throw those questions out and do some additional demos. But Patrick will be answering those along the way. And also, you will be muted. So we won't be able to hear you uh, reserve your questions for that question panel. And let's go ahead and get started and start talking about just the basics, the, the how file management itself got started. Uh, filing cabinets were actually invented back in the late 1800s by Henry Brown. I took a little note of that earlier. And uh, Henry Brown, Brown basically patented a way of organizing paper. Obviously, information was saved and archived on paper. That went into folders. And those folders went into organized filing cabinets. And the digital filing cabinet took over years later. Um, obviously, Windows and Mac users, we create a, um, files and directories and drop all of our files in there. But it's not much more than a digital representation of the typical hierarchical structure of a filing cabinet. Now, I want to be fully transparent here, full disclosure, and I want to tell you that I still use my filing cabinet. In fact, if you look behind me on the webcam, maybe I can tilt my camera down, you can see it right here. There's my trusty, rusty filing cabinet. It's still in use to this day. I can open it up. And inside we have basically a treasure trove of old cables and uh, a couple of boxes. I've got, uh, in fact, quite quite some treasures here, my old iPod Nano case and, and other items all located and stored in there. What I don't have are any files, any actual documents. Those are all digital. So my filing cabinet, my old filing cabinet, is basically where technology goes to die. <laughs> and so technology these days, it's all digital. I keep all of my files digital whenever possible and never print out. Um, and it's all stored on my computer. It's, sometimes it's stored online, and I manage and access all of that information, obviously, through the brain. So let's go ahead and jump onto the screen now and talk about specifically how the brain handles all of our digital data. So let me just rearrange my screen here a bit. Obviously, you can see to my left on my screen, um, I have a typical file and folder structure. So this is great, a lot of folders, and I can drop files for the um, uh, related information into those folders and, and store my information that way. But we're missing a lot of context with this type of structure. You know, I've got this product quite price quote, um, and that's in a folder called eSolutions, which is the name of my business. But what product is that for? Who's working on that document? I need more information. Are there other price quotes for other customers that are closely related in some capacity? And of course, the, uh, the typical structure of the file and folder system has no way of displaying that type of additional information. And that's where the brain comes in. So let's go on a quick tour of the brain talk about its basic structure, and then talk about how we bring files and documents into the brain. So here I've got the same information that you see over on the left is all available to me directly from my brain. 
Um, so I start with eSolutions Consulting, and then it's linked up to all the different departments. So in this case, I was down in my client's area talking about product pricing. I can go to clients, and I've got them organized by service level. I go into gold and pull up my client, Time Warner. Now notice right away, I clicked down to Time Warner by coming down through my, uh, my, my gold level clients. That's their service level. I also could have clicked down through clients by service type. They fall under communications as well as media and entertainment. So notice that I have multiple parents for this one thought, and we refer to those as parent thoughts. So the thought in the very center of the screen is called my active thought. Above we have the parent thoughts, and down below we have the child thoughts. So here we're talking about a basic hierarchical structure. So parent thoughts down into child thoughts. But where the brain really differentiates itself away from the typical file and folder structure is that, number one, I can have multiple parent thoughts. So regardless of how I was thinking about my information, I still could have accessed this Time Warner thought where all of my files and subdirectories are instantly accessible down below. So I could have clicked through media and entertainment or clicked down through, as I did, gold standard. And of course, down below, I've got all of my documents and maybe even what we would typically call a subfolder, a subdirectory, that's a child thought. So here's my reach out active project. This is an ad campaign I'm working for this client on. And of course, I click and I've got all of that related information, all the files, meeting notes, and documentation associated with that ad campaign is now available at my fingertips. But also notice that many of my thoughts are linked up to people over on the side. You may have noticed even Time Warner. I've got the account lead, Fred Baxter. Joe Smith looks like he's the engineer for this account, and Vin is currently working as the graphic artist. So once again, I've got more context in my information. I'm not just accessing a folder with all the files for that particular client. I'm see seeing who in the organization, in my organization, is actually working with that client and what their roles are. And we'll set these up in just a little bit when we set up a few more examples and talk about how we can actually label and identify the relationship between thoughts. So rather, once again, than just having a file located in a folder, there's an explanation as to why that file is there or why that file is related to that category or to that folder. And we do those with what we call link types. But now let's also bring our attention down to the attached documents. And this obviously is our focus today, is that the brain can have any type of digital content associated with a thought within your brain. So here I've got Word documents, I've got Excel spreadsheets, You'll notice when I open up some other pages and, and thoughts that I've got links to web pages or even emails or sometimes just notes located down below. So a lot of additional information rather than just a typical PowerPoint presentation or a typical file associated with each individual thought. Now if I click on this particular thought, I can launch file attachments in their native application. The brain is always going to launch any type of attached file in the operating system's native application. So what that means is, let's say you run multiple different browsers, but regardless of how I drag and drop a link into the brain, the brain is going to launch that web attachment, in this scenario, in its native application. So whatever my default browser is, that's what that particular file will open in. So if this is an Excel spreadsheet, Obviously, it opened in Excel, and I can begin making my adjustments and changes. So this is going to be a uh, funding, and I'll create an area for product name. And then I'll skip a cell, price, quantity, etc. So I can go on and continue editing this document. I'll click on Save, and notice that the application does not ask me where I want to save this file to. That's because it's saved automatically internally in the brain. This particular file is an internal attachment inside my brain. So once again, let me open that uh, right back up again. 
I can actually close this. It doesn't ask me where to save it to. This is an internal attachment in my brain. So now let's talk about how these files and documents actually come into the brain. And there are many, many different ways this can be done. I'm going to actually start today with creating a new document from scratch. So let's say um, under my funding project, uh, or my project funding, I'm going to be using this as a presentation. And I actually need a script to read as I'm presenting this particular document to my client. So I'm going to create a new thought. And I like to do that by clicking and dragging off of the child gate. Type in my new thought name. So this is my funding script. I'll create that new thought as a child thought underneath directly linked to my funding project. And I'm going to right click on this thought and select to add an attachment. And here I've got a nice little list of file templates that I can choose from. Now if you don't see the template that you're looking for, um, you can actually click on this templates button and follow these on-screen instructions. Notice if I click on yes, it opens up a directory. Anything that I bring into this templates folder, this templates directory, the brain is going to recognize as a potential template for me to use on other thoughts. Now, I already saw what I'm looking for, so I'm not going to drag and drop anything in there now. I'll right-click once again, add attachment, and this time I'm just going to select to be a Microsoft Word document. So there it opens up Word. That document is saved internally inside my brain database. So when you create a brain, you're creating a dot brain file and an underscore brain folder. And that underscore brain folder is really a mini database that's being visualized within the application of the brain. And inside that database, there's a files directory. That's where all of your internal attachments will reside. Now, we'll talk about this in just a little minute. You do have the option to create shortcuts. If you're on a network, you're sharing documents with other colleagues, etc. You don't want to move those into your brain. You can just create a link to a file as well. So the option is completely yours, how you want to connect your brain to your information. Personally, I typically move all my files into the brain. I either create them in the brain, or if they've been created outside the brain, maybe emailed to me or sitting on a network drive, I'll typically move that file into the brain so that that file goes wherever the brain goes. We can sync our brain to the cloud and to multiple devices, and I'll have access to those internal attachments wherever I'm accessing my brain from. We'll talk about that in a bit as well. So here's my script, welcome to the funding discussion. So that's the start of my script. Once again, I save. doesn't ask me where I want to save to. That's saved internally in my brain. And here's something that I want to share with you. We can actually uh, keep track of version control within the brain as well. So right here from the Thought Tool tab, anytime I click on a thought, I can click on the Thought Tool tab to view the properties of that thought, what file attachments are associated with that thought. I can have multiple attachments on the same thought, even of different file types. So here's my funding script. Let's say I really liked whatever I did with version one, but I want to take this in a new direction and uh, just try a few things out. So I'm going to create version two. I'll copy and paste. And there you can see I've got version two ready to go. And once again, I can launch, I can even rename this. So I'll call this script part two. So I can rename a file at any time and I'll double click on script part two. And that obviously only has whatever I've put in so far and I can continue adding additional information. So I save and close that, and that is saved right there in my brain. Now let's talk about this Thought Tool tab for just another moment. These file attachments that we see, obviously we can see the properties of the file, when it was created, the file size, etc. We can drag and drop these as well. Let's say you've got your email open, uh, or you've got a, a folder that you need, a copy of this going into a folder that's going to be zipped up to be sent off to your boss, or whatever the case may be. I can click and actually drag this file right out of the brain. So that was just a straight drag and drop. I've moved it from the brain over to my desktop. And likewise, you can grab files off the desktop and move them into the brain as well. But notice there's a subtle difference. And this is a nice transition point to talk, to talk about internal attachments versus shortcuts to files. 
Now, as you can see, I just did a drag and drop from the desktop into the brain. The default for the brain is to create a shortcut to that existing document. So the brain doesn't move the file into its internal database. It simply creates a shortcut for you. So the original stayed there, and now I've got a shortcut within the brain. But you can actually go and change those, uh, that properties or that rule within the brain preferences. So I can go up to options, go down to preferences. If you are using a Mac, you would go to the brain and then down to preferences. And right here on the UI tab, you notice there's an option. So on drag and drop, we're linking files into the brain. That's the default. You can change that so that on drag and drop, you are moving files into the brain. So let's go ahead and select move files into brain. We'll say okay. I'm going to delete this shortcut since that is soon going to be no longer valid. Now I'll drag and drop right into the brain and notice that it moved that file internally into your brain. So that's an option that you have to go in and change that default if you're seeing that you're always moving back and forth. If you're a mix, if you're sort of a hybrid, sometimes you are linking to files that are on the network, sometimes you're moving files in, we've got some options for you there as well. So let me really quickly go back and change my preferences. I'll switch back to the defaults, link files into brain. And now I'm going to go into this folder that I shared with you earlier. So I've got a lot of documents here that I need to start moving into the brain. I'm going to grab this 2016 Outlook, sort of a sales forecast, and obviously if I drag and drop it into the brain, it's going to create a shortcut. I can drag and drop, rather than to the Thought Tool tab where it's attached to the existing thought, I can drop underneath the existing thought. So notice that created a new child thought with a shortcut back to that document. So anytime you drag and drop up to the Plex, you're going to be creating a new thought the thought is the name, is the file name, and that is a shortcut back to that original. But we can also, I'm going to grab now a PDF file. I'm going to hold down the control key. Now, on a Mac, this would be done with the uh, command key. On a PC, this is the control key. And this actually creates, control, drag and drop, this actually creates an internal attachment, a copy of the original. So there's my PDF. It's internally in my brain, but the original company overview is still there. So that control drag and drop or command drag and drop on a Mac is actually going to copy the file into the brain. And then finally, another shortcut that we have, let's go to a Word document. Here's my presentation outline. I'm going to control shift. Same on Mac OS as it is on Windows, control shift, drag and drop. And notice that that moved the file in my presentation outline that no longer resides in the folder that's been moved internally into my brain. Now, don't feel that you need to sit down and, and, and write all those down, control, drag and drop versus control, shift, drag and drop. You can always drag and drop something into the brain, right click and select to, in this case, it's an internal attachment. I can move the file out of the brain. I can go to a shortcut. I can right click and from here I can copy the file into the brain or move the file into the brain. So I actually do that quite often. If I don't remember or I'm just working quickly, I drag and drop something into the brain, it creates a shortcut. I can real quickly right click and select to move that file into the brain. And maybe you noticed there in the background really quickly that 2016 Outlook forecast document is no longer residing in this folder I have open that's been moved internally into my brain. So a lot of different options to best fit your environment. If you're just creating shortcuts, or maybe you're creating shortcuts for a, a time being and then realize the brain is really great, I want to commit to the brain and rather than just linking to this old file structure that I used to utilize, if I'm ready to start moving these into the brain. You can go back and change those attributes, move files into the brain, and we actually have a couple of shortcuts for you. You can run a report. Notice if I just refresh my report, I get an alphabetical listing of all the thoughts in this particular brain. And we'll talk about this in a little bit more in detail in, in just a bit when we're talking about navigating through our information. But really quickly, I'll share with you that we can run a special report to find all, or excuse me, an attachment report 
to find all external attachments. So this brain has 21 thoughts with a link that is external, so just a, a link to a file or document. If I were to zip this brain up and send it off to a colleague or move it over onto another machine, these 21 thoughts would have a link to a file that's not on that other machine. So there's a way for me to review my work before I move my computer around to uh, um, another device. And there's also a shortcut to quickly move all those attachments into the brain really quickly in the brain utilities. We'll talk about that in a little bit as well. So there we've talked about basic file attachments. So creating a shortcut to an existing link or moving an existing file into the brain and even creating a new file from scratch right within the brain. But let's also talk about bringing folders into the brain as well. Um, that's another option that you have if you're just getting started with the brain and obviously for years you've kept all of your information and documents in folders. It's time to bring that info into the brain. That is certainly an option for you as well. If you just want to visualize your folder within the brain, maybe you're not quite ready to commit yet, you just want to visualize what would my existing folder structure look like within the brain, that is a simple drag and drop. So I can grab a folder. Let me go out onto my desktop. And, uh, oops, nope, that's on my C drive. That's where my eSolutions is. And here in my, let's say my marketing department, or let's just say this e entire eSolutions folder, I want to visualize right here within the brain. So I'm just going to drag and drop eSolutions and drop it in. <clears throat> now notice that I have a link to the folder. So if I close this, that's great. I can launch a folder, launch a directory directly from the brain. But if I want to visualize the structure of this particular uh, eSolutions folder from within the brain, once again, I'm going to go up to Options and into Preferences, and I'm going to turn on what we call our um, virtual thoughts. And here's the option, once again, on the UI tab, Show Virtual thoughts for folders, and I'll say OK. And notice now eSolutions is being visualized. All of those folders, all of those internal attachments are accessible right here from the brain. So see all these file attachments located down below. I've got some graphics and PDFs and Word documents. Those are all in the eSolutions folder. So when I'm on the visualizing the eSolutions folder, here I can see those same items in an alphabetical list over there on the right and all the subfolders show up as a thought. So I can go into marketing and view all of its subfolders and meeting notes, view all of its subfolders and so on. Now, this virtual thought feature within the brain is really just for visualizing that content and accessing it quickly. Now I can go into meeting notes, for example. This is another great feature of the virtual thoughts. If I go into my, I think it was in marketing, meeting notes, and I bring a file in, so let's just go grab another file. Let's say this funding document, I'm moving this over. Now this funding document I've moved into this directory, which is being visualized in the brain. So if I go back to the brain, notice that funding Excel spreadsheet is now accessible from that meeting notes directory. So any changes to those directories that are visualized in the brain will be reflected in the brain. So that's a really nice feature. And once again, it's just for visualizing and accessing the information. Um, you cannot search on virtual thoughts. And it's, um, I cannot add jump thoughts or additional content um, to the virtual thoughts. I'm just visualizing that existing directory. So what I like to do or prefer to do is rather import into the brain. Rather than just visualizing that content, when I'm committed to the brain, uh, which I have been obviously for years now, I've imported all of my folders. And sometimes people zip up a folder of a project they're working on. I inherit that responsibility to manage that project. So I've got a new zip file with all the subfolders and files and directories. Those get imported into my brain, not just visualized. So I'm going to go back and unlink eSolutions. So I'm just going to forget that thought, right click and forget. And I'm going to now import eSolutions into the brain. Well, I've already got, I'm in the eSolutions brain, so I'll actually import uh, this marketing directory. So I'm going to go up to File and select to Import. 
And notice that we have a long list of different types of imports that you can bring into the brain. So you can not only import folders, you can import uh, properly formatted Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, and other mind mapping uh, files as well, an existing mind map or free mind file that you have, you can import into the brain. Some of those applications have limits on how many, I think they call them nodes, how many nodes you can connect to and how many links nodes can have. The brain has no limits. So you can bring those files into the brain and continue growing and expanding them uh, beyond the previous limits that they had. So in this case, I'm going to import an existing folder. So I'll navigate over on my PC into my C drive, eSolutions, and I want to grab this marketing. I really liked the content there. So it verifies that I am importing, and it's already done. It goes by very, very quickly, but notice this action imported 14 directories. That means 14 new thoughts, 36 files, uh, no URLs in that particular import, but I say okay. And here is that marketing directory directory now imported into the brain. So once again, my internal attachments, files in a folder show up as the attachment. There's my meeting notes. There's that funding document. So all of those internal attachments are in my brain. And by importing it, I can take advantage of all the brain's additional features, such as cross-referencing other relationships. So this meeting notes, uh, this meeting was attended also with my uh, friend Norm. So Norm was on that uh, particular meeting as well. And Norm is sort of maybe going to be heading up this project. So I'm going to click on the link between Norm and meeting notes. And I'm going to edit that link. And uh, he is the project manager for all meetings for this marketing campaign we're working on. So I simply labeled the relationship between those two thoughts. So whether I'm clicking down through my marketing campaign here on this project, this funding project that I'm working on, or if I'm clicking down through, this is sort of an org chart. So I'm clicking through my IT managers. There's Laura and Norm reports to Laura. And I can see Norm is managing all of our meeting notes for the marketing for this particular IT funding project. So I'm cross-referencing. I'm, I'm seeing more information and more context now with my files than I would from a typical file and folder type of structure. I think that really, really drives it home on how you can take a folder to the next level by adding that additional context within the brain. But we need to move on from typical files and folders because like I said at the very, very start of today's webinar, our information is coming from so many different data sources. We also have online content. So let's really, really quickly talk about how the brain can bring in all of your web content as well. Um, in the meeting uh, for this marketing campaign we're working on, we recently discussed maybe putting together a couple of um, uh, customer surveys. And so for under marketing, I'll create a new child thought. And thank goodness I spelled that wrong uh, on, on purpose, but as you can see, spell check right in, uh, in the brain as you're creating thought names or even adding to notes down below. So here's my customer survey. Maybe this is just research. So I want to specify that on the thought label, I'm going to add research. So I'm just reminded this isn't the customer survey we're sending out on this marketing campaign. This is just some research that I'm putting together. I haven't finalized anything yet. So that's just a nice little reminder for me to uh, type in that thought label for that particular thought. And now let's start bringing some web content in. Now I don't have the web content ready yet. I need to research what does a customer online customer survey look like. So I'm actually going to search the web right from the brain. If I go up to options, you can see I could have also clicked on F4. I'm going to use the brain's search web feature to search for the topic of customer survey and see what we find. So this brings up my default search, which you can see I had marked as Google. And uh, SurveyMonkey, I hear a lot about SurveyMonkey. I don't know much about them, but I think I'm going to be spending some more time improve customer satisfaction with surveys. This is a great, great starting point. So I'm simply going to drag this web page right into the brain. So from the browser, from the address bar, I'm going to click and drag right into the brain. And as you can see, that creates a new child thought with a direct link to that website. 
And I can do this as many times as I want. I can come back and find, uh, here's a nice blog written about six online customer satisfaction survey tips for beginners. That's me. This is perfect. So once again, I simply drag and drop into the brain. Now, I accidentally made that underneath the other thought. I want to move that up to customer survey. A couple of different ways you can rearrange thoughts. Um, since I can see the two on the screen at the same time, I can click and drag over to the sibling thought area, and it links up to customer survey. I can also drag a link from another thought and connect, and then at any time, right-click on a link between two thoughts and unlink. So I've moved that thought up, basically, underneath that customer survey. So a really, really great, easy way to bring web links into the brain. And for those of you that have ever joined us in some of our other webinars, you know, today's mostly about files, so I've spent most of the time talking about actual documents, Word documents, spreadsheets, PowerPoints, whatever, bringing those into the brain, folders as well. Um, but obviously web pages, web content is a very, very crucial part of data storage and data exchange these days. So that to me is a, a file that is research, that's document information that I need in the brain. You can drag and drop your web pages right into the brain. What I was going to say is we have some um, webinars that are hosted specifically talking about bringing web content and other ways to bring web content to the brain. So there's a lot of different options for you there. But I want to share a few more of those with you because sometimes our documents, Word, Excel, PowerPoints, they are stored online. And of course, I'm talking about Dropbox or Google Drive. Sometimes people don't even have Word installed on their machine. They just have the online version of, of, of Word. And all of those online data resources, um, OneDrive, Google Drive, Evernote, whatever the case may be, all of the individual items, files or, or documents, whatever you want to refer to them as, depending on the application, they all have URLs. And any unique URL can be associated with a thought within the brain. So once again, I'm going to create a new category, and this is simply just called research. And I'm going to actually go out and open up some of my online data storage accounts. So you can see, you may maybe noticed in the background, I have my OneDrive open. And here are all of my different documents that I'm storing in my OneDrive direct for directory. Rather than just dumping them all in and categorizing this the way I would a typical file and folder system, I want to start bringing links to these into the brain. I can just have one giant folder, so to speak, and have links in my brain from their associated context linked to that particular document. And so here's a project overview. I'm going to right click, and this is for uh, Google Drive. There's different ways to get to the share button or the share URL with these different online resources. But if you do a little bit of research, depending on who's your online resource data file sharing application is, there's a way to get to the URL. So typically it's right click and find share. That's the way it is here. And actually Google Drive get shareable link. Um, I click there and I wish it would just add it to my clipboard, but I think I need to uh, copy this. So I copy that onto my clipboard and in the brain I can right click, paste web link. So there is my project overview directly to that specific document right there in my Google Drive, Google Drive, and I can launch. And it's not just going to take me to that folder, it's going to take me to the project overview document, right into that document by grabbing the shareable link. And there you can see when the document is open, it's got the shareable link access there as well. So a little bit different for uh, Dropbox. Let's go ahead and go into Dropbox. But notice there's all those paper clips. All these online data uh, storage utilities are pretty much the same. It's an online document. And every online document has a URL. So I right click and I go to, oops, let me just actually click on the, don't need to right click. I click and select copy link. So there's the link once again on my clipboard, copying the link from Dropbox. And I go back to research, right click over on the side, paste web link. And there's a document, this document was called Green People. Uh, Excel spreadsheet, but there once again is a direct link right to that specific document that was originally um, or that is currently stored in Dropbox. So 
So a lot of different options that you have for bringing any type of a file or content directly into your brain. A few more that I want to share with you, a couple of unique scenarios uh, that the brain has. The brain actually has some really, really great ways of uh, linking to Outlook items. So I'm going to open up Outlook. And um, this is a sample Outlook uh, directory that, uh, that I use. I don't typically use Outlook, uh, but I know Outlook is a very popular application. And so I want to show you the unique integration that the brain has with Outlook. So let's say I'm researching a little email flyer for our customers. And this has a nice layout. This actually came in, it looks like, from uh, uh, United Airlines. Um, but I like how it's big, bold graphics, nice and clean. I want to share this maybe with my design team to see if they can emulate this type of email. So I'm just going to drag and drop the email from Outlook. This is not the way that it works in other email applications. This is unique to Outlook. I can drag and drop into the brain, creates a new thought with the link back to that email. That's nice. But notice when I activate the thought, I get an HTML rendering of that email down in my notes section. So in the future, I don't even have to launch Outlook. If I'm looking for a password or some text, some coding that one of my engineers sent to me, I got it in Outlook, I drag and drop it into the brain, I've got that HTML rendering. So I can scroll down and you know, copy that content or find that graphic, copy that, put that right into the brain. It's not always pretty, it's a, it's a rough HTML rendering of whatever that message was in Outlook and sometimes there's a lot of tables and extra JavaScript and things like that that the notes area can't handle. But for the most part, the content that I'm after is there and accessible to me so that even if I'm offline, I can access these graphics or the, the text or what have you from an Outlook message that I brought into the brain. Now, that being said, I mentioned earlier that this is the way Outlook integrates with the brain, not the same with um, what is it with Google, with uh, Gmail or Hotmail? That doesn't mean that you can't link to those items. You certainly can. I don't have my Gmail open right now. Oh, maybe I do. There I do. So here's a Gmail. This is great. And Gmail is really, really great because each individual email has its own URL. So in this case, it works the same as the web pages were. I can drag and drop from the, uh, from the browser, from the uh, address bar right into the brain, now, it doesn't give me much context there. It just tells me that's a Gmail link. So I can rename this to, um, maybe I just like the nice layout sample for our email campaign. I'm not even concerned what the context of the email it is. I just want to share this with my engineers because um, I like the layout. And once again, I'm going to link that up to my research. So in this case, I'll start typing in the thought name, research. There it is, marketing research. So this little drop-down menu is a really great way to reduce duplication and clutter within your brains. Notice whenever I'm typing something in, the brain is showing me if that thought already exists. So I double-clicked on this research thought that I created earlier under marketing and linked directly to that unique, uh, that specific thought. So that's the... Um, uh, uh, that particular feature within the brain is really just a great way of, one, once again, reducing clutter, but reducing duplication of thought names. I already had that thought for research, and that's the thought that, uh, that I wanted to link it to. And then finally, one more component that I want to share with you, speaking directly to uh, and about file types and file management. Sometimes our files aren't documents. They're, they're graphics or they're video or sound files. And as I mentioned earlier, any type of digital content can easily be brought right into the brain. So I've got a directory, if I go over here to the left, and I go into, not that one, but rather the one that I have open, there it is. Let me just jump back up to eSolutions. And I've got a couple of graphics here, and I want to bring these into the brain to show you how the brain handles graphic attachments and it's really fantastic once again we've got some unique integration with graphics so i'm referring to jpegs gifs um, uh, ping files are very popular now and notice i can just drag and drop this wallpaper ping right into the brain 
And a couple of different things happen. Once again, it's just creating a shortcut back to the original file. That's the default, as we discussed earlier. But it also gave me a nice zoomable icon right on the thought. So I can hover over that graphic, and it zooms up. Notice that it fills the plex, the area where all the interconnected thoughts are. If I give that a little bit more screen real estate, it'll make the graphic a little bit larger even when I mouse over. So it expands out to its largest potential size, depending on the size of your brain and the graphic itself. And I get a nice little mouse over zoomable icon. So I'll do that for one more graphic as well, just so you can see the difference. I'll bring in this buy now graphic. We're going to be using that as well. And once again, I hover over. That graphic isn't as big, so I just get to visualize the, the buy now graphic. So all of your graphics that you're bringing into the brain, connecting with thoughts, those will be attached as a thought icon. Even if you move those into the brain, let's grab one more. Here's a cube gray. I'm going to bring that in. Now I'm going to right click and select to move that file into the brain. So it's an internal attachment, but once again, my zoomable icon is still there. Notice that uh, ping. For those of you that are know a little bit about graphics, it's got a transparent background. So even that translates to, translates to that zoomable icon. This particular feature is really great. Sometimes I'll even take a screenshot of a PowerPoint presentation so I know if that's the correct PowerPoint with the right opening slide. I'm sure I'm not alone, not alone when I say a lot of my PowerPoint presentations. You know, the presentation is the same, but we customize the, the cover for the, the client that we're working with to, uh, to get a, a, a unique demonstration specifically for that client, right? So we can take a screenshot of that cover letter with the client's logo, and we know, oh, this is the uh, presentation for Brown Dog Entertainment. This is the presentation for uh, uh, eSolutions or whatever the case may be. So a quick screenshot as a graphic that's attached to the thought. I get the nice zoomable icon. It really works out great. And finally, the brain can also take those screenshots for you. So let's say I'm not even after in this email that I linked earlier. I don't care about the email graphic. I just like the picture of the hands holding the, the device with the web page splash and some words. That's what I'm going to use for my ad campaign. So I don't need the entire graphic at all. I'm just going to leave that open in the background and from the brain, I'll create a new thought. So I'll call this holding an iOS device. And I'm going to right click on the thought and select to capture thought icon. Great feature built right into the brain. The brain minimizes itself and now you can drag and drop with the crosshairs that are there to create your own custom zoomable icon. So that is attached. Now, if I go into the containing folder for this thought, you can see that's where the PNG file attached. So the brain is actually making my file for me, my graphic for me. I don't need that other uh, expensive tool like Snagit or whatever the case may be. I can just use the brain to capture those images for documents that I happen to be working on. A really, really great and powerful feature that I use quite a lot for taking screenshots right from the brain itself. And it looks like we're coming up almost on QA time. So I also want to share with you the great capabilities of bringing all these files together as we've done so today, but also taking them and making them mobile or getting to them online or from other devices. You know, we talked about, um, uh, Google Drive and OneNote and so forth and all those online accessible files, the brain files can be accessible too. And you can sync your brain to the brain cloud. So I, everything that I've done today, I can now sync my brain. So it's just locally is, um, are the changes that I've made. I've been working on the local version of the brain. But now I'm syncing this brain to the brain cloud. And so I'm going to actually open up my cloud account I just simply log in to thebrain.com, click log in. <clears throat> and I've got a lot of things running at one time here, so it, uh, it might be a, a little bit slow. Maybe I actually, yeah, there we go. So we're now logged in. I can go to my account page. And uh, these are brains that I'm sharing with others. I'll talk about that in just a moment. But on my account page, I can get to my eSolutions brain. 
and access my brain online. So right here from the web, notice that I'm in a web browser on the left, and there's my desktop version finishing up its sync over on the right. And now I can click down into my clients and service level. So I'm gonna go into that same area that we were in earlier today. So gold level clients, there's Time Warner. And I believe this all started with doing some research and some work under my new marketing program, funding, there it is. So there's my funding thought. And when this finishes syncing, I'll have access to all of those files, those internal attachments right here from the cloud. So it's just finishing up the sync now. But as soon as that's done, I'll share with you that I can access those files from a URL, from a, a web device, and from a mobile device as well. So I'm opening up my brain. Let's make sure that I can view this on the screen. So here I am launching the brain application and logging into my eSolutions brain. So there is the same content. Now from my iOS device, I can sync this brain to another machine, and it's even cross-platform compatible. So therefore, I've done everything today on my Windows machine. I can easily be syncing to my Mac at home, so I can get a little bit of work done over the weekend, sync that back to the cloud, access it online, or sync once again on my desktop here at the office, and I've got access to all that work I did over the weekend. So a lot of benefits to syncing your brain to the cloud, and as I mentioned earlier, you can share these files. So let's say I wanna share this particular thought with a colleague that has access to this brain. I can right click, go down to share, and grab that URL and share that URL so that my colleague can go specifically to this thought to download that file attachment or whatever the case may be. So a lot of additional uh, information in, available on our website with regards to the capabilities of publishing your brain to the web, to the cloud. All brains that you sync to the cloud are automatically marked as private. So it's password protected and it's encrypted. The upload, storage, and download all encrypted. So it is absolutely secure. It's up to you to take it a few steps further, whether you wanna share your brain with another colleague in read-only mode or upgrade your account to team brain. You notice I opened up my team page earlier. Those are brains that other people on my team have editor access to. So multiple people editing the same brain and collaborate, collaborating and sharing files in the same brain interface. So some fantastic collaboration tools available for you as well. But once again, that information is available on our website. If you go to www.thebrain.com, you can learn more about team brain and the capabilities of sharing your brain online. But with that, I think that's everything that I wanted to cover today. So Patrick, I'll welcome you back onto the call. And if we have some questions, I can see that the question panel was really lighting up. Patrick, you kept all kept Patrick very busy, which I love. And, uh, and he had a lot of answers for you there. But Patrick, anything that specifically you want me to visualize here for the, the group on the webinar? Yes, we did have lots of questions and lots of feedback. So uh, one question from uh, Chip is, uh, will general document software such as OpenOffice Docs be able to be brought in? So uh, if you could maybe go over quickly how to add template files into your brain for any Absolutely. other file type that you'd want to add. Absolutely, and that's a, that's a great point because I know Patrick is, uh, Patrick is sort of Mac-centric, where I'm a little bit more PC-centric. We're both uh, ambidextrous, so we can work on both. Uh, but knowing the Mac users out there may, may have seen that when you are adding a template, so I'm going to open up my brain, and let's say I right-click to add an attachment, a Mac user, by default, this list will be blank. So there's nothing there yet in your templates directory. It's up to you to actually populate that list. So you can click this Templates button, and uh, do I want to open the Templates folder now? Yes, I do. And anything that I drop in here, so let's actually drop something in. Uh, anything that I drop into this directory will show up for me as a template. So let's say I am using over and over again on a daily basis uh, this sales figures document, and then I just change the numbers according to the 
uh, client that I'm working with. So I'm going to actually copy this and paste this right here into that directory that the brain opened for me, sales figures, and I'll go ahead and close that now and back into, make sure we get into the desktop version of the brain. There it is. And once again, I right click and I select to add an attachment. There it is right at the top of the list, sales figure. So that document is now a template. So anything that you don't see appearing on your list, maybe you've installed some unique random application um, and the brain obviously doesn't give you a blank template for that type of application, create one, open the app, save a blank file or save a file that's been slightly modified. You can you know, add your header or whatever the case may be to the document. Save that and bring that into the directory the brain opens up for you. And then your, uh, in this case, my sales forecast is an option. So there's my sales forecast document, has some content in it. And I can use that over and over again for any thought in my brain to apply that as a template. And notice there my sync, uh, so before we get back to more questions, my sync just completed. So I'm just going to go back and refresh eSolutions Consulting just to show you that all that funding content is there. And service level, gold, Time Warner, and there it is, project funding. Funding script that I added today, and my Outlook, company overview. There's that marketing directory that I imported. So all that content that went into this brain today is now accessible to me online and my mobile devices as well now that the sync is done. So, and Patrick, I'll throw it back over to you for our next question. Great. Uh, Greg had a question on visualizing the multiple connections of the files that you have added to the brain, uh, the thoughts and their parents. So, uh, in other words, like maybe an outline view, if you could cover outline view and how you could better visualize the connections instead of having the uh, top to top to bottom view. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, there's definitely other ways, and I'm just kind of navigating up, up, up to Time Warner, other ways to view the information that you put into the brain. So this is a feature, and I'm actually going to, I'm going to minimize my tool tabs down below. So there's a little button in the upper right-hand corner where I can click to minimize my all of those tool tabs. I click again, it's just a toggle to bring them back. But I'm basically giving myself a little more screen real estate. And I'm going to minimize Time Warner using my mouse wheel. So these are all sort of customized settings that you can play around with. If you go into your preferences and take a look at the look and feel and the UI tab, you can turn on your mouse wheel resizing. So you hover over the active thought, mouse up and down to change the size, etc. And now that I've set up a size that I like, giving myself a little more screen real estate, I'm going to change the view. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just click on the plus sign. The default view, we call it the normal view of the brain, is the current active thought and one generation away from the active thought. But I can click on the plus sign, and now I'm seeing two generations away from the active thought. Now, all of this depends on your screen real estate and capabilities. I'm broadcasting at a really low resolution. I actually have another monitor over here off screen, uh, very large, that I can move my brain over to and make my thoughts much smaller really expand my brain so potentially even seeing every thought in the entire brain and all of those thoughts relations but this is really really great because now I can see Time Warner is also falling under media and entertainment and I can hover under media and entertainment and see the other clients there's TrueNet and Web Lunch and Trudy's Smith and Sons so these are other media and entertainment thoughts uh, so I'm seeing the bigger picture greater context in addition to expanding one generation away. I'll go in, we've got a few other options. I'll go into outline view. So outline view is a much more linear display, but notice that I can hover over thought and click on the plus sign to expand. So once again, the bigger picture, I can start expanding and then I'll expand this thought, expand again. Anytime I click on the plus, it expands that thought and shows its child thoughts, or I can hover over now and click on the little collapse button, minus sign, we call it collapse. And I'm not deleting anything by clicking on that, I'm just simply removing it from the view. So that's another viewing option 
a much more linear structure of the brain, but again, depending on your screen size and real estate, you can get sort of the, the big picture. And if you really want to talk about the big picture, we can go into what we call the expanded view. Expanded view is where I decide where every single thought is going to go. Let's minimize one time and start from scratch. So perspective client, I'll expand those just a few of those. Service level, I'll move that down and expand. Notice that every button I'm clicking on, I get an expand or a collapse. So, and collapse, I get a little line out through the thoughts. What thoughts won't I see once I click that collapse button? Uh, but I can expand and media and entertainment. I'll move over here, expand that again. So there you can see I'm really starting to get the big picture once again of all of my digital content. So we call that expanded view. I can save this view. If I really like it, I can work out a marketing view or a sales view or a research and development view and go up to my view and select to save that expanded view to load up later at a meeting I'm going into or what have you, and then switch back to normal view at, at any time. So a lot of different viewing and scaling and sizing options for you within the brain to really customize and get the view and the information that you are specifically looking for. Great. Um, and Henning would like to know if you could uh, maybe go over searching documents, uh, elaborate on how you can search uh, text Absolutely. in your documents and just searching documents in general. Absolutely. I'm so glad you brought that up. Now, I talked earlier about um, how we can uh, run a report and filter our reports and find information that way. The brain has a very, very powerful search in, built right in. So I can search for, I'll just search right now for a couple of letters and notice that I'm first presented with what we call the instant search results. So these are thoughts that contain the name that is exactly whatever it is you've typed in. So there's John Powers. I can click and go directly to John's thought here in my brain. But I'm going to do a more extensive search, click, type in the word power, click on the search button, and that brings me down to the search tab. So once again in the search tab, I am first presented with all of the thought matches. Down below, all of the content matches. So the brain is actually searching all of your internal file attachments, all of your shortcuts, even web links and emails, whatever you're bringing into the brain, if it's text-based, that's going to be indexed and therefore be searchable or it can be searched on within the brain. So I can go to, click to go to any one of those documents. Here's an, a Word document that contains the word power. I can launch the document and go from there. Um, if I'm seeing that I've got too many uh, results to search through, I can filter this a little bit. I'll go into advanced and say, all right, I'm only going to search through my thought notes. So individual notes that I kept about a thought. And uh, I can filter the criteria from there. I'll leave it at that and say, okay, go from 20 results down to just five. And here you can see my InBest database. I've got a couple of rebuild tasks on a few different database and bases, and this one simply needs a new power cord installed. So that's my task for this database that is down in the network map area of my brain. So again, all of that context that is going, or content that's going into your brain is automatically indexed and searchable, making for a very, very powerful um, search engine with, within the brain application. All right, great. I think Fantastic. that uh, pretty much covers it. Great. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We had a lot of information to cover, a lot of different options and ways that you can bring all of your files and your different types of data into the brain and then what can be done with it from there. So I hope you will walk away from the meeting deciding to start bringing additional content into your brain and managing it from the application. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us at support at thebrain.com. We're always happy to hear from you and answer any additional questions you may have. And we also have some really, really great web resources as well, some powerful tutorials and documentation on, on using the brain. And Patrick, did you have anything else to, uh, to follow up with today? No, I was just going to also mention uh, support at thebrain.com if you have any additional questions or need help with anything. Feel free to give us a call or email us.
Fantastic. So thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Enjoy your weekend, and most, most importantly, enjoy your brain. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.